Hey guys, how's it going? It is my different username here, and today I'm going to be showing you all what is surprisingly one of the most controversial rifles to ever come into the US military. It was a weapon that almost from the start was completely shunned for its lack of performance and overall effectiveness on the battlefield, but over time, after many improvements on the original design, eventually grew to become the amazing platform that we see it as today. So, without further ado, here we have the M16A1 assault rifle made out of Lego. So, the M16A1, or technically the finalized version of the original M16 rifle design, which was designed back in 1956 by Armalite, was the rifle of choice for the American forces infiltrating the jungles of Vietnam back in the year of 1965. American troops in the beginning were fitted with the original M16, but were struck with the multiple issues from the rifle poorly interacting with the jungle environment, which gave the rifle horrible reputation, and it was definitely well known during that part of the war that something had to change. Luckily, around 1966, a new prototype for the rifle dubbed the XM16E1 was built with several improvements made for the rifle and was officially issued back to the US troops back in 1967 as the M16A1. Not only did this new rifle perform better throughout the remainder of the war, but the Armalite system even still remains to this day as the main rifle platform choice for the US military. Alright, before we begin, I'm just going to admit that there is quite a bit of information to talk about on this rifle, so I figured we could begin with the lower receiver section of the gun. Right here we have the older AR styled grip, which is slightly altered from the more modern pistol grip design. Also, it holds this little pin on the bottom, which actually isn't present on the real model, but I use this pin to help disassemble the gun, and once I'm done, I just simply put the pin back into place. And right above the grip we have the fire selector on the left side of the rifle, which unfortunately doesn't affect the trigger, but can mimic the cycling of the different fire modes. And when we move towards the magwell, we can see both the magazine and the magazine release for the rifle. The mag is actually based off the old stamped aluminum 20 round magazine. You can even see the slits running down the mag as well as the bullet and shell sitting on top. A pretty decent looking mag overall and it does even have a cutout section for the magazine release system which sits pretty well within the mag well but unfortunately the friction doesn't allow the mag to just fall out enough but there is no problem at all to just press the button and manually remove the mag all at the same time. And since it is a part of the lower receiver we might as well cover the stock as well. It's a pretty smooth stock piece overall, and I even used some specialized sloping to help get that correct shape for the bottom part of the stock. It has a simplified buttstock plate in the back, and you may have even noticed that the sling mount piece looks a little peculiar, and some of you actually might really like this or really hate it, but I actually did end up modding this piece in order to get it to fit inside this adapted pinhole plate. Before when I made my sling mounts, they were in the same design as like my Springfield rifle, but unfortunately would always break, as I do mention in that video, so I wanted to come up with a different design, that design being this. And it may have been a horrible choice to mod these pieces the way I did, but the sling mounts do feel really great and work super well with this Lego sling, and yes, it is an actual Lego sling, believe it or not. Besides all that, the sling is pretty long, so I just prefer to run the rifle without it. So, with the lower receiver and stock covered, now we can move on to the next part, which is the upper receiver. And, when it came to the bolt system, I really wanted to try to replicate the arm light system as well as possible with LEGO. The charging handle on top pulls the bolt back and does feature a latch on the left hand side, but is treated more as an aesthetic piece and doesn't actually lock the handle down. This rifle even has the ability to pull the bolt back in order to manually engage the bolt catch and to release it, you simply press the button back down. Also, the rubber band is actually hidden behind the bolt face and this means that the charging handle is completely loose when it's not under any tension, just like the real model. One aspect to point out on this too is the forward assist on the right hand side of the rifle and the one that's featured here is the older version commonly referred to as the teardrop because of the shape alone. And this isn't a functional piece on my gun but on the real model is the device used to drive the bolt forward into battery when the charging handle can't do it on its own. I kind of figured I'd just share that with you guys because surprisingly a lot of people really don't know about that feature. Also, last aspect to point out on this model, which I actually do find really disappointing, is the fact that the dust cover isn't actuated by the moving of the bolt. And I tried to find a system that would work with the type of receiver and bolt that I did build for this gun, but unfortunately I couldn't find any luck, and maybe hopefully I'll find a fix to the solution in the future, because I'm definitely going to be reusing this upper receiver design the next time I make an AR-styled weapon. 
So, moving on forward, we can now take a look at the handguard for the rifle, and the challenge to try to make the triangular handguard as well as possible, I can say, was easily the main reason why I even wanted to build this gun in the first place. Many hours of trial and error went into the designing of the handguard, but while I was streaming the designing process, another YouTuber by the name of Walker helped in coming up with the concept of building the handguard, which eventually grew into what you see here on screen. And surprisingly, another design for the handguard also came from the one and only Nick Brick, who designed a more smooth handguard where the flat sides would actually angle down forward from the inside pin system that was built for it. And this was an extremely good design but unfortunately came with the issue of connection points that would either be too fragile to connect to my barrel or would just need a complete redesign of my barrel in order for it to attach even properly. So unfortunately, I did have to scrap it. But the final design that you see here came out, I would say, pretty rough, but at least is very sturdy as a build, holds some level of detail, and it even represents the triangular shape really well, which I could definitely live with. And if we take a look at the barrel, we can see the front sling mount, the gas tube and front sight in place, as well as the flash hider at the front, which is a new design I wanted to try out for this build. And it's just a simple bird cage flash hider that locks into place via a 1x2 Technic brick and a quad headlight brick. Another feature on here is this bayonet lug, which I could not believe actually can fit the attachment of bayonets, but that's not the surprising part. What is surprising is the fact that it can fit bayonets that I designed around a few months ago for a sponsored video. Specifically, the ring on the bayonet could surprisingly wrap perfectly around the barrel here, and the adapted pinhole plate can just simply connect to the back of the hilt. And it could even be swung around too just like a bayonet should be, and stays fairly sturdy throughout the whole process. And normally for something like an M16, it would be more preferred to run something like a C7 bayonet and not something like a CSGO knife, but I really didn't want to add more time into the making of this video just for a simple bayonet design, so I figured it'd just make more sense to bring out one of the knives that I still have around and show you that the bayonet lug actually works. So, if we take a look at the sights for the rifle, here we can see the front post sight as well as the rear sight which doubles as a carry handle, although I would never trust holding this by the handle alone. Also, the rear sight has the adjustment knobs on the sides and follow along with an aperture styled profile when aiming down. Overall, I have to say that they're really great sights and I don't even mean by the way that they were built, I just mean the way that they line up with the rifle. They just feel so satisfying, at least for me personally, and I even think I did a really decent job when it came to their recreation in LEGO. So, in conclusion, the M16A1 was a really challenging build, at least for me personally, but it felt great to know that I didn't have to do most of everything alone. Some of the aspects here and there came from the collaborative effort of other LEGO weapon builders, which is just a great feeling overall. Besides that, it also felt good to just once again go back to a rifle that I've made in the past and retouch all the little mistakes I've made a long time ago to help build a better rifle for today. And I think I can easily say that this has to be my most favorite rifle to have ever built out of LEGO, hands down. And to celebrate, I figured we could take this rifle and finally test it out. But we're not quite done yet. You saw in the beginning that I could easily remove the handguard for this rifle, and let me tell you, that's no coincidence at all. There was actually another variant to the A1 that was used during the Vietnam War, and I figured it wouldn't be good to end off the video without this. So here we have the M203 40mm grenade launcher built for the M16A1 rifle made out of Lego. That's right guys. The M203 40mm grenade launcher, which honestly feels like a mouthful just saying. But this grenade launcher was designed by the AAI Corporation back in 1968 and was to be mounted onto the M16A1 rifle in the year of 1969 as a way to replace the use of the M79 grenade launcher, which 
during the time was a standalone weapon, which limited anybody who ever carried it on the battlefield. So, to make it easier for all-purpose use during the war, they decided to make the shooter have the ability to use the rifle in more appropriate engagements, while at the same time having the launcher option whenever it was necessary to use. And the M203 has been used by the US military ever since the Vietnam War, until actually very recently, where it's been replaced by the HK designed M320 grenade launcher. And the M203 grenade launcher is pretty hard to film just on the rifle, so to make it easier, I'm gonna take off the handguard and just film that instead. And here we can actually see the different parts to the build, the actual launcher itself and the special heat shield handguard that are two different pieces. The handguard features this barrel latch and cover which is used to open up the barrel but doesn't actually work on my model because on my model it only needs to be grabbed and can easily slide the barrel forward just by pressure alone. From this point any kind of 40mm grenade can be selected to be loaded into the launcher including this HEDP 40mm grenade. And this grenade right here is actually modeled off of the M433 round and is meant to be a very high explosive dual purpose round. <laughs> Okay, I didn't think it was that sensitive, but anyway, it can be loaded into the chamber and from that point just by grabbing the barrel and sliding it back locks the whole thing down due to friction alone. And if we move back more we can see the trigger system and safety, and to take the safety off of this, just move the lever away from the trigger and just like that it's ready to fire. Once fired, simply eject the empty case and repeat the steps from earlier to keep on shooting. Also another feature is the ladder sight that sits on the top of the handguard and can be used to line up with the M16's front post sight to acquire targets from 100 to even 400 yards away. And the sight can easily be left down as well to allow the regular iron sights to be used on the rifle for rifle shooting. And that was the LEGO M203 grenade launcher and I gotta say a really beautiful recreation of the device as well especially for something I haven't made in over 5 years honestly. But with all that said, I think we're good to go and we can finally test out this launcher. I think it's jammed. Hold on a second, guys. Ugh. Um, that didn't look like a grenade. What is... Uh, Calibri, what are you doing here? How many times do I have to tell you not to be in any of my videos? You know what, Calibri? That's it. That is it. I am done. Done. Good riddance. Okay, back to the video. Oh, this video is so dumb. <laughs> Ow! Oh! What the? Oh! <laughs> hey guys, I didn't see you there. What's up? My different username here. Well, I gotta say, guys, congratulations. You actually made it to the end of the video. Seriously, I'm actually really proud of you guys. Well, since you guys are here, I might as well give you a few announcements before you completely head out and never return to my channel again. So this one's kind of a big deal, and I feel like a lot of you guys are going to be happy with this, but I am actually officially going to be bringing back the LDD files for all the guns I've literally allowed to have LDD files for. I know, I know. At first I kind of had an idea that maybe I could like sell these weapons to you guys, and the fact that like some people could literally just take the guns and then resell them to people was kind of like a bad thing. I just don't think that's going to end up working. I don't know. If you guys are interested in maybe me selling you some pre-made guns, you know, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. I don't know. And don't worry, the M16 is in the description of this video too, so don't even worry about that. Besides that, I really, if anything, wanted to just absolutely apologize for how long this video took. Like, really, this video took a stupid amount of time, and I honestly am really, truly sorry for that. So, around February time, I actually ended up designing the gun. Obviously, I had to get a few more guns out before then. Around June, I actually ended up building the gun. And also, around the time I tried to do something experimental, I actually made a vlog for the M16, as you can see here. Didn't really work out. I was extremely awkward the whole time. I really have no idea how to talk to the camera when it comes to just like doing updates and stuff. So, uh, 
that was a fail, honestly. But yeah, guys, I really hope you have enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. Hopefully, I'm going to get the next video out really, really soon. It's either going to be an AA-12, or I've been kind of looking into the Steyr, um, I think it's called the Steyr 1912. It's the pistol. Man, it's going to be one of those two. They are super cool, and one of them is going to be the next video. I just have no idea which one. Also, if you guys haven't had the chance to, you should definitely check out my uh, new Discord, you know, uh, where people post uh, things. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, and man, that really hurt. Oh. So guys, subscribe if you want to see more epic LEGO creations made later in the future. Like, favorite, and comment if you have enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching. Are you... Really?